are Donald Duck, Mickey Mouse, and Uncle Scrooge Furries? Why yes, yes they are. So what is a furry comic? That may be a little hard to define. Um, it's kind of open to interpretation, but it's basically any funny animal comic book. It doesn't have to f uh, focus on sex and violence, which is often the stereotype that furries are all about, that they're all just perverts. But no, there are a variety of fun all-ages stories, oftentimes great art, by independent creators. There are heartfelt stories, dramatic stories, funny stories, everything in between. It just happens to be with funny animals. So let's start the countdown. Hello everyone, it's VM Campos, comic book fan. I've got another top five video for you. This time we're counting down the top five furry comics. The aforementioned Disney characters are usually defined as furry characters or anthropomorphic characters, if you want to get fancy. I'm going to count down the top five lesser-known furry comics. Doing the research, there are so many to choose from, so I've got a lot of honorable mentions. We'll get started with... Fusion. This was a series published from 1987 to 1989. It ran for 17 issues and was published by Eclipse. Not completely furry-focused, it takes place in the future, where we've got humans, augmented humans, and genetically enhanced characters, which are furry characters. The creative team was Stephen Barnes, Leela Dowling, and Steve Galachi. Okay, no furries there. But we've had the, uh, the members of the Weasel Patrol, which often had back, uh, backups in the issue. And we're part of the main cast. This is Tan. He's a genetically enhanced otter. And then amazing art like this. Uh, this is, uh, I believe, a takeoff on a poster. A famous 80s movie. Uh, some of you uh, old-timers will remind me what it is. It's that one uh, Olympic uh, bicycle movie, right? And there were a variety of furry characters throughout the series. And look at that amazing cover there. Ken Macklin art. So basically, it takes place in the future. There are genetically enhanced characters. Uh, there are a ragtag band of misfits. It's sort of like Firefly before there was Firefly. So honorable mention, Fusion. Number five, we have A Natural by Mirka and Dolfo. This is the American version of the Italian comic Contro Natura. It's published in the U.S. by Image Comics. It's one of the few furry comics that is currently being published in the U.S. Now, this is a mature book, but the concept is, what if the totalitarian government that you lived in allowed who you dated, who you fell in love with, who you procreated with, who you had a family with, everything else is unnatural. Our main character, a pig girl, is having those unnatural thoughts, which causes a lot of trouble in her society. The art is amazing. It's modern. It's bright and colorful. Mirka and Dolfo writes it, draws it, colors it, and everything. Now, this is actually a variant cover by Art Germ, but she does the regular the regular art, which is really good, very luminous, very well drawn. Uh, very cool is that Andolfo visited uh, local San Diego comic shops recently and signed her work. There's an alternate cover by Milo Manera, controversial Milo Manera for issue number one. But Andolfo's art is all her own. This is Unnatural from Image Comics. Another honorable mention that I'm going to have to black out mostly is Genus Comics, the original adult anthology furry comic, first published in 1993 from Venus Comics. It featured a variety of artists creating stories, erotic stories, in black and white. Venus Comics is an imprint of Antarctic Press, and later on, it went on to Radio Comics for a variety of issues, and then finished at Sin Factory. So honorable mention, genus. 
Number four is Albedo Anthropomorphics. This is another anthology series dating back from 1983, first published by Thoughts and Images. Steve Galacci founded Thoughts and Images, and this is number zero, the prototype issue. Now, number zero is worth big bucks if you get the first print. This is the fourth print, and it basically has the beginnings of the Galachi universe, uh, plus a parody of Blade Runner. Another claim to fame to Albedo is it's an early appearance of Usagi Yojimbo by Stan Sakai. Here's number four. Number seven features a beautiful Ken Macklin cover. Is number 10. The main breakout character of Albedo was Irma Felna of the EDF, the Extraplanetary Defense Force. A really cool, complicated plot uh, that was military based. It had overtones of sexism, racism, politics. Very well drawn. This was the breakout series of Albedo, even though it started off as an anthology series. Here's number 14, which features real artifacts of uh, the characters from the series. Fun fact, do you recognize that chair? That is Captain Picard's chair. This photo was shot on Jean-Luc Picard's chair on the Enterprise by Ken Sternbach. I think there were some closet furries in Star Trek. Eventually, Albedo was published with uh, by some other companies. This is uh, Antarctic Press. This is the Albedo Color Special. Dig that shiny logo. And again, Irma Felna, the breakthrough star. Painted cover by Galachi. So number four, Albedo. Another honorable mention is The Adventures of Captain Jack by Mike Kazela. This is a lighthearted, funny... A comic from Fantagraphics, published from 1986 to 1988, 12 issues. Um, we've got uh, Jack, the captain of the Glass Onion, with his crew of misfits traveling the galaxy looking to make a quick buck. It's funny, it's well drawn, Kazela's art is very fluid, very Chuck Jones-esque. Now, this series was not without its controversy... Issue number five uh, was the one that made everyone lose their minds because there's a mild little sex scene between Herman and Janet when they land on her planet. Uh, well, they fall in love and, and want to be together. But, you know, you can't show naked furries having fun, so they had to slap on the mature reader's text. Uh, this went on for 12 issues. It was never quite finished. The final issues were very heartfelt, uh, very emotional. Uh, it wasn't all about just the comedy and such. It got pretty serious toward the end, and they never had a 13th issue. Well, sort of. It did kind of have a continuation of issue number 13 in another comic. But this is Honorable Mention, The Adventures of Captain Jack. Number three, Hepcats. I regret I only have one issue to show you here, but this is the comic from Double Diamond Press, independent publisher. Founded by Martin Wagner, published from 1989 to 1994. Also then reprinted in Antarctic Press, 1996 to 1998. It's basically about a, a group of college friends, their trials and tribulations, a totally heavy, heavy series. Artwork is amazing. It's in black and white. Most of these comics are in black and white, but it's just so detailed Scenes are so realistic, juxtaposed with these furry characters. Issue number three here actually begins part one of Wagner's magnus opus, Snowblind. It was supposed to be an 18-part series about some of the darkest depths and emotions that these characters experience. It was never finished. It went on to maybe... Uh, I don't know, 12 issues or 12 uh, parts of Snowblind, and it, and it never was finished. Wagner tried to keep it going online, but, you know, by the late 90s, um, it kind of faded away, except for a cult following. So number three, Hepcats. 
Another honorable mention is the anthology series Critters from Fantagraphics. Published from 1986 to 1990, 50 whole issues of this series with a variety of who's who in the world of furry comics in the 80s. A variety of styles, everything in black and white, cartoony characters, perhaps more realistic characters. Here's issue 19. Number... 32 this one's interesting number 23 uh, is a is a thick one and it's also got a a record inside a flexi disc so you could hear alan moore and the sinister ducks uh so it's a musical album here teddy Payne and the blue bears it's a comic but it's also got a record you could play amazing Towards the end of the run, they started to have issues devoted completely to one character, one story. This is Stephen Galachi's birthright, so creator of uh, Albedo, a side story. And uh, one of the final issues, uh, 42, I believe, uh, also had the conclusion or the continuation of The Avengers of Captain Jack. So honorable mention, Critters. Number two is Omaha the Cat Dancer by Reed Waller and Kate Worley. This series is from 1984, uh, published by their own Steel Dragon Press. Um, this was independently produced. It lasted two issues, adults only. This is a first print. It's the, the $1.60 first print. It had a couple of printings before it was then uh, reprinted and then published further uh, by Kitchen Sink. Uh, they published 21 issues from 1986 to 1994. The first two are reprints of issue one and two from Steel Dragon, higher price with the trade dress of Kitchen Sink. Amazing art by Waller and, uh, and Worley. Uh, it takes uh, place in the fictional Mipple City, which is an uh, anagram, sort of, for Minneapolis. We've got uh, Omaha, an exotic dancer, and her boyfriend Chuck. Basically, they have to run away uh, from Mipple City and go off to San Francisco. Uh, you know, dead hookers and stuff. So it's a very mature, very sexy comic, uh, very good story, amazing art. This is actually pretty important historically because this was part of an obscenity trial uh, in the 80s. Friendly Frank's, a comic shop in Ohio, was uh, taken to court for selling obscenity. Then in the early 90s, New Zealand and Canada uh, seized issues of this book on various grounds. Well, this is also an Eisner Award-nominated comic in 1989 and 1991. So it's the second most important furry comic on this list. One more honorable mention. We have Furlough, another anthology series, another Antarctic Press comic. This is a long-running, military-themed comic book featuring furry characters, published from 1991 to 1997, about 51 issues and then by Radio Comics from 1997 to now. All the info that I found online doesn't show a definitive answer if this book has ceased publication. I even asked Radio Comics themselves on Twitter, but they didn't get back to me in time, so who knows. This is the best of Furlough, number one from 1995. This is an early issue, number 24, with the old Antarctic Press logo, 1994. This is later, number 60, beginning its seventh year of publication. This is a really long-running furry comic. And even if they're not around now in 2018, they were around a long time. A lot of creators went through these pages, a lot of great stories, a lot of great art and concepts. This is issue 111 from 2002. And from 2004, 141, your monthly funny animal anthology. 
number 152. They started to put mature readers uh, sign on that. 170 has a great Feudal Japan cover from 2007. And 190 is from 2010. Again, I wasn't able to find much info about how recently they've published. This video is from 2018. Uh, but this was a long-running furry comic. Honorable mention number one. And finally, number one is Usagi Yojimbo, the top furry comic, the, the longest-running furry comic out there. Created by Stan Sakai in 1984 and first published in an issue of Albedo, this is Usagi number one when it received its first uh, series in Fantagraphics. In Fantagraphics, it went from 1987 to 1993, 38 issues. I love this cover. Great uh, setting sun background there. Very determined rabbit bodyguard. Here's another early issue, number six from Fantagraphics. Oh no, Usagi, watch out for that kappa! Later on, it got published by Mirage uh, from the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. I don't have any of those. But then they were published by Dark Horse Comics. And here's issue number 100 with a variety of creators paying tribute. This is 2006. So Usagi had been around 20 years at that point. It's still going strong today. The latest storyline, Usagi Yojimbo The Hidden, still published by Dark Horse in 2018. So this is over 30 years that Usagi has been published. As I showed before, he was originally created in the pages of Albedo, Albedo number two, and that's worth big bucks. This is number four, his third appearance, and I just bought off of eBay uh, number three, his second appearance for a great price, because these early Albedo comics can be pretty pricey, especially those featuring Usagi. So if you see them for a good price, snap them up. So can you believe it? Over 30 years, this character has been published. So can you believe it? So many furry comics to choose from, I just couldn't limit myself to five. And of course, perhaps you're saying, where's the biggest one of all? Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles? Well, here's issue number two from Mirage's second series, I think. Uh, yep, didn't put it in here, but this is sort of like a given. Everyone knows the TMNT. Uh, does everyone consider them a furry comic? Uh, that's uh, open to interpretation, but I would say yes. This has been VM Campos with another top five list. If you liked this or my other videos, don't forget to subscribe on YouTube or head on over to Patreon.com and think about contributing. For $2 a month, I will send you a cool curated comic book to add to your collection every single month. What a deal. This has been VM Campos. See you in the sewers.